This is the only in Japan 360 question and answer video presented in 4K. I've put a lot of photos and additional video all around this 360 world, so definitely have a look around. If you have Google Cardboard or a virtual reality headset, use them. If not, you can use your browser or your app and look around the world. Just make sure they've been updated. Hey, everybody. Only in Japan. This is Nihonbashi, which many consider to be the center of Tokyo. It's a hub for many traditional businesses that have been operating here for centuries. A lot of international company offices and startups are located here too. Welcome to Tokyo Station. This is the Only in Japan question and answer episode in 360. So help yourself look around. Uh, you can move your smartphone around or if you're wearing Google Cardboard or a virtual reality headset. Welcome to a brave new world, bold, big, and beautiful. So this is Tokyo Station where you pick up the Shinkansen and the new Nihonbashi entrance, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna take you over now to the other side, the Maruno Uchi uh, entrance, which is more old traditional, but they've renovated it, so it's quite interesting. Um, I'm gonna keep this video moving. That means I'm not gonna try to stay in one spot. We're gonna get a chance to look at the city and answer some of your questions while you get a chance to look around, which I think is gonna be pretty cool. Look up. The North and South Maranouchi ticket gates have high, beautiful ceilings. The station opened in 1914, and its design is rumored to have been based on Amsterdam's Central Station. This is one of my favorite places in all of the city. This is the seventh floor of the Maru building, which is across the street from Tokyo Station. You can see the Shinkansens and all the trains whizzing by. It's being renovated right now. It should be completed within the next year. This side is Ginza, over there behind this building. You probably can see Tokyo Tower. And behind us is the Imperial Palace, which is where the Emperor lives. It's flat and green and absolutely beautiful. And at night, the view from here is spectacular. So I highly recommend coming to the seventh floor of the Maru building. And this is also an appropriate place to start the question and answer series um, with this question, why did I start only in Japan? And that happened right after the earthquake on March 11, 2011. Um, a couple of months after the earthquake happened, tourism died here in this country. And that really broke my heart because I'd been living here for over 15 years at the time and know how incredible Japan is. Uh, I just wanted to take what I was doing, I was already reporting on an international station here, to take that to another level because YouTube as a platform allows me the freedom to do whatever I want, um, to go anywhere, to see anything. And that's really exciting to me and I wanted to do that. So in 2012 I drew up the blueprints for Only in Japan and in 2013 I launched this series in February with the Naked Man Festival, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. In 2003 was also a reason why I decided to stay in Japan. Um, I hitchhiked the whole country from Wakanai, the top of uh, Hokkaido, to Kagoshima, the very bottom of Kyushu, the whole country in the course of one month. And I made a movie about that. And that uh, experience uh, is why I stay in Japan. And it's also a reason why I really love this country because while I was hitchhiking, uh, I was picked up by 20 people over the course of the month that took me from place to place. And just the kindness and sincerity and the hospitality of strangers in this country, it was so overwhelming to me uh, that I decided to stay in Japan. Um, I had been in the country, I'd been in the country for, uh, what, about six years at that time. And after that, I said, I'm gonna stay. So if you're wondering why I came to Japan, I don't even know the reason why. I guess it was curiosity. The real question is why did I stay? And I think it's just because this country is absolutely beautiful. It's safe. The food is delicious. I love being a foreigner, being an expat. People look at you different. It's sort of exciting in that way. And I feel that the best way I could help my own country is to bridge Japan with the rest of the world, not just America, but uh, other countries in Asia and to tell the story of Japan, to tell you what's happening in this country. And I really love that.
I hopped onto the Yamanote line and traveled to the next spot, the Harajuku Omote Sando area. This way, this way, over here. So I've had a little bit of trouble asking myself these questions, so I've enlisted the help of my friend. <laughs> we walked in search of a quiet place to do an interview. The trip took us down Harajuku's Takeshita Dori, where I learned a little bit about fashion in a previous episode. Passing Harajuku Station, we walked to Yoyogi Park and settled in at a bench by the pond. Question and answer in the park. Welcome to Yoyogi Park here in the center of Tokyo. I've taken all of the top comments and I've given them to Angela over here who's going to be asking me these very intimate and personal questions because I just can't ask myself. I need somebody to ask me. All right, go ahead. Okay. Let's get so, this over with. Okay, so question one from <laughs> from Wolf. What? What Walker? Oh, Wyatt, Wyatt. Wyatt, Wyatt Walker. Why do you like Japan so much? <laughs> I like Japan because I've been here for 18 years and it's just part of who I am now. It's my home. True, I see Japan and the US both being my homes, but right now, I think I'm more uh, connected with Japan. But why? Why do you like it? Why? Um, it's so easy to live here. It's so much fun. It's so interesting every day. The food, the people, the fact that I, I get to speak in a foreign language, the fact that I'm very different here. People look at me funny sometimes, maybe because of the way I'm dressed or the way I'm walking or whatever. The way you're walking. It's just, I don't know. It's just. <laughs> Really interesting to live as an expat in another country, and why not Japan? Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Next question from Conan Kun. What is your ethnicity? Yeah, this one got asked a lot of yeah. me. Um, I'm American, 100% American. America. Yeah. So my mother is originally from India. Uh, she was born in Mumbai. Uh, my father is American, but his background is German English. Uh, I think there's some Polish and actually some New Zealand family and oh, really? uh, yeah so I'm mixed very international internationally yeah, me internationally you yeah, yeah. that's her name yeah. okay number okay he Conan could also ask do you live in Japan <laughs> yes yes uh, you know, a lot of people ask me this do you live in Japan yes okay. I've lived in Japan for 18 years since 1998 um, I left Japan once for six months and I came back and I've been here ever since. So, this is my home. That's an interesting question. Sure. Cool, okay. Um, yes, we have. Oh, this is a hard name. Yes, we Hadoken. Okay. Asked, Who is best girl? Oh, I saw this one. <laughs> Who is best girl? Got 17 likes, wow. I don't even know what that means. Um, best girl. I'm not married. Uh, I'm single. I'm straight. Uh, yes. What is that? What does that mean? Um, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. That, yeah. Danny Lee asks, "Can you show us behind the scenes of Only in Japan?" That's really good. Um, okay. So I got this 360 camera about a month ago and I'm going to be using this on location shoots, just putting it to the side and creating uh, 360 videos, which will be behind the scenes. And this is really behind the scenes because it opens you up to the whole world, what's happening in front of the camera and behind it. And I've created a separate channel, uh, Only in Japan 360, which 
you will be able to see a lot of 360 content. I'm going to separate the two because if you don't have in goggles, if you don't have um, Google Cardboard, this format can be a little bit annoying. No, you can just uh, press the button, press the arrows on the screen. Yeah, you can do that, but it's still a little bit annoying because you, I mean, you're always flipping around, and if you say something, you have to go back yeah, to the person yeah. to see them again. Or you're in a cafe watching like this, and that can be a little bit strange for people to do. So I think it's good to have a separate channel. Let's take a quick break and head to Hachiko Scramble nearby. Here are the top episodes in terms of views on the channel. Thank you all for making these shows popular. Now, in the center of the intersection, a short fan-submitted video from Mobile, Alabama, in the USA. Hi, John. We're the Rolling Kids. We love Only in Japan. My favorite episode was probably the Spotron one, because I like to sword fight. And we have, like, some lightsabers, and I like how you mentioned um, the double-sided Spotron sword. How it looked like the Darth Maul saber. I like your videos a lot. My favorite one was the Gotcha Pond. I really want to do a lot of them when I, when we come up to Japan. I love the strawberry episode because it has strawberries in it. They're my favorite fruits. I love the ice cream episode because it has ice cream and it's my favorite dessert. Thank, Thank you, John, for making Only in Japan. Matane! Matane. Roland family, thank you very much. Back to the park for some more Q&A. I talked about the show's frequency and why I make only two a month. I think the channel Only in Japan is gonna, right now it's just twice a month. Um, I try to get it out the first and the third Thursday. Sometimes it's a little bit later, sometimes even a little bit early. But any more than two times a month is a, is a challenge because I'm on locations and you know what I mean? We make these videos, um, most of the YouTube creators, we don't have cameramen and audio guys and editors and producers above us and people uh, telling us what to do. We go out on location. There was one that I shot in Kagoshima, the, um, a volcanic sand bath. I went to Kagoshima by myself. I set up three cameras on tripods all around. One, the guy, the manager of the place was controlling one of the cameras for me as a favor. And that was how I operated and I had to move quickly. And uh, that's one of the biggest challenges of doing the format that I do. Is I don't have a cameraman at all the, time, all the time to film. I really would like to have that fun. Which is amazing, your work. Uh, anyways. <laughs> anyways, uh, Papa Franku asked, where, well, no. He asked, why did you decide to live in Japan? Uh, I sort of answered this in the opening, but I guess I can go in a little bit more detail. I came into Japan in 1998. Uh, I just finished college. I graduated from Ohio State University in 1997. I took all the... I, I worked through college. I didn't have any debt, any loans to pay off, and I had a little bit of savings, and I blew that backpacking for six months around the world. And when I got back, I needed a job. My roommate was a Japanese major, and he came to Japan through the JET program, and he, and he sent me an email. We didn't have, you know, chatting and texting back then. He goes, you got to come to Japan, man. It's so awesome. He's been saying this all through college. He used to sleep on a futon. He was a weirdo. With the same accent. Yeah, the same accent. <laughs> you got to come to Japan, man. This place is cool, and you make making good money, and it's so weird. It's awesome. It's Asia. Okay. So, okay, I hadn't seen Asia yet. I came here. He left. Uh -huh. I stayed. Oh. And I've been here ever since, but he, he's one of the big uh, factors of why I came, because I had a friend who was here already. I didn't know any Japanese before I came. I wasn't interested in manga or anime. I wasn't interested in martial arts. I wasn't even interested in Japanese girls. I didn't think they were that attractive. I thought they were too dolly and too cute, not beautiful. But now, you know. Yeah, you get, you, you get used to it. You get used to it. 
I think one of the things that you might see through the episodes to the program is I like to do things, participate, be in a situation where you're, you're doing it. And through that, you learn a lot about the culture from that direction, not just preaching it, but doing it. Yes. Um, okay. Oh, this is really fun. I like it better when someone's asking yeah? it than okay, just... Okay, that's uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Phone call. Let's take a break and talk with a co-reporter about Only in Japan. All right. <laughs> get, get, and there he is! <laughs> There's Kevin! Yeah, yeah. It was, it was working. I just need to be reconnected again, I guess. Wow. I see half your face, buddy. <laughs> oh, there he is! There he is, Kevin <laughs> Riley. So how are you? You're in Osaka right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm at home right now. So tell me, what was your favorite street food that we ate? We were we had a show on Dotonbori and a show at Nishiki Ichiba in Kyoto. Was there anything in particular that you really liked? Um, I'll tell you what I really liked was those little octopus that we were eating out. Uh, remember the little filled with the Usura egg inside? Yeah, how the heck did they put the egg in the head? I know. <laughs> It must have, I, I guess they had to remove the beak or something like that and just stuff it inside. I'm not too sure how they do that, but it'd be interesting to see how they do it, right? Right. Well, in Dotonbari, anything with takoyaki is good, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the takoyaki is pretty good. And then the gills that we had, remember? Right, right. Yeah. So a lot of right. people don't realize that you were on the show before we did those street food shows. You were on the um, uh, Japanese vending machine episode doing yeah. the coffee. Yeah, but, but one big line, this is good coffee or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> this is good coffee. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that the cameraman for the first episode of Only in Japan is this guy right here, Kevin Riley. He was the cameraman for um, the Hadaka Matsuri, the Naked Man Festival. Yeah, yeah, I, I was glad to be behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you didn't want that super wedgie, did you? <laughs> that was no, 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 I watched you get the wedgie and I was like, oh, that is painful looking. That and the fact that it was freezing cold, they were throwing water on you. You guys were freezing. I was roasting because I was running around with that camera. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, your background, you're a Canadian Swiss, right? Yeah, yeah. I grew up in Switzerland and then moved to Canada while I was still a kid. Yeah, I finished growing up over there. Right. I've been here for a long time, yeah. So you don't mind winters at all? No, no, no. I, I actually prefer winter. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. God. That's the Indian part of me, right? Yeah. God, if I can I mean, avoid it, I would. I, I figure you can always put more clothes on, but you can't. Yeah, you, know, you can only get to the point where you're naked. And I'm not allowed to walk around outside naked. I don't know why, you know? <laughs> well, I did have a fundoshi on, which is not fun. Great to catch up with Kevin. Now let's get back to Angela and the Q&A. So I'm stumbling. Oh, we didn't there, practice but... this at all. Okay. No. no, yeah, we didn't practice this. So. No. Okay. Uh, swir or sm no, no. <laughs> Small World Maniac asks, what is your favorite Japanese food? Small World Maniac asks, what's my favorite Japanese food? Uh, yeah, this is good. really hard because Japan has so many different um, mm. uh, foods. In, in different regions, different things are more delicious. I guess, um, I love Osaka. I love the cuisine down there. I love teppanyaki. Uh, I, I used to live in Hiroshima for two years, in 19, between 1999 and 2000, and then again in 2003, I lived in Hiroshima. Okonomiyaki, Hiroshima style, Hiroshima style is, was my favorite food. Uh, I'd say sushi, but that, that gets kind of boring. I think you can't eat that every day. Tempura, tendon, anything with on rice. Any tendon, gyudon, any don, I really love that. You like it? Yeah, but I cook a lot here. Do you cook? I cook, yeah, I yeah. cook a lot. I've been making Japanese food because when I came here in 1996, it was very expensive to eat Western foods. You couldn't, right. you couldn't get that. They had to go to special supermarket. So you still miss, you still miss the Western food in um, I did when I first came, but I don't anymore because okay. I'm so used to eating Japanese cuisine and it's just, healthier and easier to cook because we're in Japan. Okay, well let, let me ask a personal question for myself. Okay. What, what is something you must eat in a week, like each week, what is something that you always tend to eat? Except for rice. Uh, okay. Yeah, rice is 
base. Uh -huh. um, edamame. I love yeah. edamame, especially in the summer. Um, I love Japanese beef here, the uh, meat. Expensive. It is a little bit more expensive. I love the American and the Aussie beef too, uh -huh. but I really love the Japanese beef. Not just the Wagyu, but um, there's just so much more flavor that I'd never tasted with American beef back home. So, but I don't eat a lot of meat. I used to when I came, but it's more, believe it or not, tofu. Tofu? Yeah. Oh, healthy. A lot more tofu now than I did um, 10 years ago because it's cheap and it's easy. Natto. Uh, natto, yes. Oh. I eat that five times a week. Yes. Natto I eat that for breakfast. A, yeah. yeah, I really do. I like it. Natto, I eat that on rice with egg. Um, and little condiments. I think that's when side. you know you've been in Japan for too long. <laughs> yeah, but I used to live in Mito. Mito is the home of Nato, and I didn't really have a choice. I had to eat it. I was forced to by my friends there. Uh. Radio, okay, moving on. Um, I think this is a good question. I think a lot of people will be wondering the same. Okay, thing. shoot. What was your favorite place to visit in Japan? Miyajima. In, down in Hiroshima. Um, I, again, I lived there um, in 1999. There weren't as many tourists back then, and there were moments where I felt like I had the a whole island to myself. Mm. It's just such a beautiful place. You have the deer walking around. Yeah. You also have um, uh, oysters, which are very popular in that region, just grilled right in front of you. I used to camp. Even, even though I lived in Hiroshima, I would take my tent and camp on the island, which you can do for, a, I think it's a couple hundred yen, you have to pay a small fee. Um, I love taking the boat and going to that little island. I, I, even to this day, that's a place that I wish I, I lived closer to so I could go there more often. I like Odaiba uh -huh. in Tokyo. Right, right, Just, right. I like to sit outside and drink or relax on the decks there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Hiroshima, you said you like the Hiroshima Okonomiyaki. Yeah, Okonomiyaki. Yeah, yeah, so you get that in Hiroshima as well. Right. Let's go to Odaiba right now. This is the monorail, the driverless Yurikamome line that crosses the Rainbow Bridge. On the way, let's talk with co-reporter Kai Okudara. So this ramen gyoza challenge that we did, why couldn't we finish that thing? I think, you know, we both live in Japan for a while, so our stomachs get small, and then also, we didn't prepare for it. I no, think we didn't. My training was normal everyday eating. <laughs> Yeah, and that doesn't work, especially you live in Japan. All everything's small. Right. So, do you think you could do this with a little bit of training? Uh, I mean, you look at the hot dog eating contest people. They train most of them. The right. People who win, anyways. So yeah. So that's our. So that's our excuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why didn't I use my hands to eat that gyoza? Everyone writes, use your hands. Why did I use a fork and a and a knife? Well, I mean, like, the, the skin was, like, like, like that thick, and, and it was the size of a baby. <laughs> yeah. That's not something you can really use with chopsticks, and definitely picking it up with your hands. People yeah. don't know how oily that thing was. Yeah, I mean, that, that thing would have fell on the floor. Right, and it came with a fork and knife. What are you supposed to do? The guy gave me a fork and a knife. Yeah, I'm surprised it wasn't a steak knife. Yeah. Or, or a hacksaw. So what's the deal? You, in the videos, I know we plan it where you always just sort of pop up on the scene, you know, at the Manga Cafe and the Gachapon Kaikan. Are these places that you, you, you've been to before? Um, pretty much. It was the first time in every case, but I mean... <laughs> People don't know that. Yeah, so acting. <laughs> yeah, right. Now these places, they don't have any English manga. You never saw that there, did you? No, I didn't see that, no. Neither have I, so that answers a lot of questions. People have been asking, are there any English manga at these manga kisa? And the answer is usually no. I mean, when most of the people go there are Japanese, yeah. like, it just doesn't make sense for them to have English manga just sit there and like collect dust. Right. But, I mean, that could be a business opportunity, but we need, we need more like foreign otaku. Right. Come to Japan. Yeah, come on. <laughs> More foreign otaku that come and stay at the manga kisa, I bet you the more English manga they're going to put out there. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for taking the time, Kai, and, and looking okay. forward to having you on the show again soon. Yeah, yeah, I mean, let me know you come up with something crazy and interesting, you know. It, not, 
not ruling it out. Oh, we will. <laughs> we will. <laughs> okay. Thanks, buddy. All right, see ya. All right, bye-bye. Great to see Kai again. We've almost reached Odaiba. Let's have a look at this Tokyo man-made city center beach. Love it here. A perfect place to watch the sunset. But we've got a few more questions back in Yoyogi Park. Okay, um, um, um. Oh, this one, Mr. Dolt. 68 says, where else in the world have you been to? Um, Someone I, says, great question. Okay. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> so, when I first came to Japan, I, would work a, I worked as a children's teacher. And I'll, I'll go... Uh, that's a big crow. They have a lot of these in Japan. They have a lot of them in this park. When I came to Japan, I used to oh work God, as... Like yeah, <laughs> they're going to jump on you. It's going to jump on you. So I, I used to work as a children's teacher and I would finish the contract. I would take the bonus and save up the money and I would backpack for six to nine months. And I had a free um, invitation, open invitation to return at any time, which I did three times. Over the course of the time I graduated college to 2004, I traveled to 70 countries. Wow. Yeah. I, I blew all of my savings and money during those between 1997 and 2004. I had no savings and no debt and I just traveled and I spent all that money. I would earn it and then blow it, discovering things, uh, doing things. You get much more of the money. You know, you get the experience. Yeah, you know, I had, I, you know, I, I hung out with a lot of older people and they all told me, do it while you're young and you can still walk. <laughs> so I take that kind of mentality with me when I, uh, when, when I was in my 20s and, and early 30s. I said, just go out and see as much as you can while you, while you can enjoy it. Yeah. And I've lived my life like that since, which is probably why I'm not married. So I'm going to go to another area tonight and read the questions off of Instagram. I think there's some other questions that might be uh, a little different in nature. Um, so we'll continue this in another place. But thank you very much, Angela. No, thank you, John. On the way to Shinjuku, let's stop by Hachiko Scramble at night. I didn't answer all of your questions, but catch me on Instagram where I will answer a question a week. Find me at Only in Japan TV. So this is the Kabuki, Kabukicho side of Shinjuku Station, and let's go take a look over there. It's been quite a long day. This is one of my favorite spots because unlike Hachiko, where you have a lot of neon lights in one area, this place is filled with them beyond what Shibuya could ever be. You can see they go up sometimes uh, 10 stories. Well, more like six or seven, but it seems like even more than that. So I'm pretty tired, so let's go to a spot deep in Kabukicho to do the rest of the uh, Q&A. Kabukicho was made famous in the movie Lost in Translation. It's also where the infamous robot restaurant is and, if you look up, Godzilla. He's above the hotel. Did you find him? The Capsule Hotel in our series is also just 100 meters away. It's a lively place that you can't miss on a Friday night. Kabukicho. Okay. Here's a question from Ma Owl Sunshine. Thank you very much. She doesn't write where she's from, but it says, Hi, I'm, I was wondering what do you do when you're not filming a new video? Any interests or hobbies? My sister and I love your videos. Thank you. Um, my hobbies are cooking, uh, running, and scuba diving. I love scuba diving. Uh, I have a dive master's license, so whenever I get a chance to work and take people on tours, especially in Koh Tao, studied at a school there, that's a big passion of mine because there's a whole world underneath the sea, which I haven't even shown you here in Japan. I got to do an episode in Okinawa and some of the uh, islands away from there. And also, I like traveling around this country. I like visiting new places. 
I love meeting new people. These aren't really hobbies, but I think when you're making videos like I do, the job almost becomes so much of your life that uh, some of those hobbies that I was doing like 10 years ago, yeah, they're kind of what I'm doing now, which is making videos. Thank you. Uh, Sophia Ortiz 012. Hello, John from Texas. I've always wondered why you originally. I have always wondered, are you originally from Japan? If so, what inspired you to make a whole YouTube channel dedicated to Japan? Please answer. Thank you. So I answered that a little bit at Yoyogi Park earlier with Angela. Um, I'm not from Japan originally. I'm from the United States. Uh, my mother's from India. My father is American and his parents came from Germany and England and what inspired me to make the YouTube channel is uh, I just love Japan and wanted to show you all really neat, neat and unique things about this country. Uh, Nicholas Takuya. Um, this is also from Instagram. How much would you need to have if traveling to Japan for a week? Will you be coming out with a video guy on a guide? and how to find food in a hotel on a budget. I work with a, with a website called tokyocheapo.com and I really recommend that you go take a look because if you're a budget traveler and you think that Tokyo is really expensive, tokyocheapo.com's got so many articles on how to save money. Again, like Tokyo Cheapo, that's sort of a <laughs> keyword for budget, right? They also have a Japan Cheapo for other places outside of Tokyo. Uh, if you're just traveling in Japan for a week, I think you need to come to Japan for more than one trip. The first trip, you're going to be in shock, like you are right now, looking at all these lights and everything in different lang in a different language that you've probably never seen before. Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, Nara, and Hiroshima. That seems to be the route that most Westerners take. People from China, uh, believe it or not, come up through Kagoshima and through Kyushu and go up along the Sea of Japan. So different tourists from different countries have different entry points into Japan. I recommend that you get off the beaten track, that you get away from Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo, and Hiroshima, and go to the mountains, to go up into Hokkaido, or go down to Kyushu and Shikoku, and that's when you get to see some, the more traditional, some of the more like, like real parts of Japan where foreign, people don't even speak English, so what you can do is use, I mean, you guys know this, right? You all know this the Google Translate app and the Google Translate app you just type in the English and it'll tell you how to say it in Japanese and vice versa the person will speak in Japanese and you get the English so there shouldn't be a reason why in this year 2016 that you can't communicate uh, through smartphones so the next one comes from Shinta Inifada in Intifada what do you love most about Japan John? It's hard to not say this, just how vibrant Tokyo is. Again, each, each city, each place in Japan, I've lived in 16 different cities over the 18 years I've lived in Japan, and each city has something that I really like about it. But if I had to generalize, I would say, again, the food, the vibrance of it all, the fact that everything still seems foreign to me after 18 years, the fact that I'm learning something new every day, there's always something uh, amazing to me that makes me go wow and that's always gonna be like that I think I could live here for a hundred years and I would still be shocked at what this country has to offer but you know food is on the top of that list uh, beauty Bellucci lots of love from Germany see here Tokyo Senpai 13 I plan to go to Japan one day. Any tips in learning Japanese? I think I answered that one. Thank you very much. Um, ah, this is kind of an interesting one. Sen4. Sen4 writes that he loves the show. And when did you first move to Japan? 1998. Is it a permanent move? Probably. Probably. I, I've been taking it year by year, but it seems like I'm not going anywhere. It's just going to stay here for as long as I can. And is it a possibility to follow in your footsteps? Sure. Um, this country has changed so much when I first came. I can, I can 
I could see where it's going by 2020, but after that, I'm not sure what direction Japan's going to take. I think they need more foreigners coming to live here because the birth rate has been decreasing. So I think it's a great possibility for you to, for everybody to come and live in Japan. Learning the language would be a definite plus if you wanted to do that. A request a show on coffee culture in Japan. That's interesting. Uh, I go to a lot of business meetings here in Japan, and one of the things that they used to give me uh, 10 years ago was tea. In fact, I still get tea in business meetings, but more and more they give coffee because Japan is a tea culture. So coffee is seen as something that's really special. It's something that has more value to people because tea is something that you drink at home. Outside of your house, people drink a lot of coffee. More than more and more. When I first came to Japan, there wasn't there was one Starbucks that had just opened in Ginza, just one in the country and now it's hard for you to walk around and not see a Starbucks or a coffee shop. 18 years ago when I first came, coffee shops were limited to Kisaten, these really old places that had been operating since the 1950s, or McDonald's. And now you have so many options. Ah, Merlina223 writes, what is the weirdest food that you have eaten? <laughs> you know, nothing's really weird anymore. Um, when I first came to Japan, natto was weird in 1999. Um, fermented soybeans, sticky, smelly. No, I kind of like them. Um, basashi was, is still kind of weird. That's raw horse. Uh, it's very famous in Kumamoto. Uh, but I'm kind of used to eating that. Raw food in general, uh, having raw egg on rice kind of weird, but the eggs here are safe because apparently the supply chain is fresh. I've never gotten sick off of raw eggs. I'm sure there's some weird stuff that I've eaten that just don't come to mind, but it's hard to shock me uh, these days. <laughs> if, if you have eaten something shocking, write in the comments below it. I will go try it out and let you know if it's uh, crazy to me. Was I, was I born in Japan? No, I was not. I was born in the United States. Ah, uh, again with food. Danais, Danaisa Bag. Danaisa Bag writes, Hello from California. This is Dana. Dana, I love your videos. Thank you. Um, yeah, that food challenge was really tough, that gyoza food challenge where my shirt was all sweaty and I was all oily because it's August and it's like a sauna, you can't help but being sweaty. And yeah, for all of you who made comments that I should have used, uh, just picked it up with my hands, I agree with you, but they gave me a fork and a knife. I wasn't really thinking about it, I just wanted to eat as much as I could. But the question Donna asks is, um, what other, what foods are there that are only available in Japan that are worth traveling there for? Awesome question. Sushi, because I've been to so many countries around the world and have never gotten an authentic sushi experience like the sushi here in Japan. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that Skiji is where a lot of the fish is sold, but um, it tastes a lot better here. Stuff that's simple like that. Um, Tempura, for example, maybe it's the oil that they use here is different than abroad. Tempura is really good. Um, everything. <laughs> There's Yoshinoya in New York City. They have about three items. There's a beef bowl, a vegetable bowl, and I think the teriyaki chicken bowl. Go to the Yoshinoya here and you're gonna find like 50 things on the menu and they're always seasonal and changing. So just simple foods, any Japanese foods, it's a reason to come to Japan to try and you won't be sorry. I, I have not eaten too many bad foods here. So thank you all very much for watching this question and answer video. I hope I answered most of your questions. If not, you can go to Instagram and ask me a question there. I'll be uh, answering questions once a week via Instagram. So please check that out and follow me there. 
I want to also thank WOW Corporation and WOW UTV for their support since this show started in 2013. Uh, I'm a part of this uh, fantastic network. They make two other shows that are really great called Ask Japanese and Kawai Patin. If you're into fashion and questions about Japan, those are some really great places to go. And I want to thank everybody else who's been um, a part of this show, all my friends and all of the other contributors that have made Only in Japan such a fantastic show, and you, the viewers, over the last three years, I love you. Thank you, and see you on the next Only in Japan episode. Maybe in 360. I want to also thank everyone who has contributed subtitles in many different languages to the channel. Thank you. I received more questions that I could answer in this video, and if I didn't get to yours, I'll try to respond via YouTube or Instagram as soon as I can. It really makes me happy when I read your comments, saying you're the first one to write, or telling me that you've loved or even disliked a video. This series is for you, and hearing back from you is what makes this channel so popular. I can't thank you enough for watching, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I'll keep trying to make the highest quality of video with an interesting story so you can learn on our adventures. Next episode is coming up shortly, so see you again soon on an adventure that is certainly only in Japan.